<laughs> so this is how we're starting the year off. <laughs> Great. We're so fucked. I am the Kaijin Okami, and this is my quickie review of The Grudge. The Grudge is a remake sequel to the Japanese movie of Juha. Well, not exactly a sequel to the Japanese version, but a sequel to the first remake that Sam Raimi had done back in like 2004 with Sarah Michelle Gellar. This continues with some stuff going on. I can't really describe it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. This is a narrative nightmare as far as the narrative is concerned. The story is so convoluted, so far up its own ass, it doesn't make any sense. Everyone in this movie is half-assing it. The main lead actress, I've never seen her before, but my god is she dreadful. She cannot carry this movie on her own, and all the supporting cast she has are garbage. John Cho is in this movie, and he is absolutely wasted. Now, when you're saying, wait, what do you mean it's a sequel? I thought it was a remake. Right. It's partially a remake, but also a sequel. So when the movie starts off, it takes place in Japan for about two minutes. If you have seen the original remake, you may recall that they said Sarah Michelle Gellar was taking over for taking care of this one lady because the previous caretaker quit. Well, the whole thing is that the caretaker, we see her quit, she goes back to America and brings the curse with her and all this hell rains down on her household and stuff goes on. And the hard part is you had to have seen at least one of the other movies in order to actually know what the hell is going on in this movie. Nothing is explained, nothing is developed, the only time you actually hear anything is when a cop says, yeah, there was this Japanese curse that goes on and she brought it back with her and... The problem is they never actually told us or even showed us that she told them about this curse in Japan. The guy just somehow automatically knows that she acquired this curse in Japan because he's a J-horror fan? I don't know. So nothing is explained. They try to do this modern hip switch where the father ends up becoming like Kayako was in the old movies. And then the mother is more like the father was in the old movies. But they're not because all of them can travel anywhere wherever they want. Whereas in the original series, there were some ground rules. The father was confined to the house. Kayako could only move around because of Toshio, who would move around because his spirit had merged with the cat, so he was able to move around the world freely, so he would take his mother with him. Well, like I said, the father was confined to the house. In this movie, all of them are up and moving around all over the place. It it doesn't make any sense. There's no rule set. The acting is quite awful. Karelika and I were in the car when we were driving back home discussing this movie. And you know how there are movies where you could just start like pulling threads off the cloth and unraveling the plot holes and everything? This movie is worse than that. It's just a pile of thread that is just sitting on the floor. And as you pull it up, it all comes up with you at one time. That is this movie. There isn't anything to rip apart because there's nothing that is even cohesively put together. In order for you to have plot threads to untangle, you have to have something stitched together. Nothing is stitched. It's like the director said, hey, I've got this great idea. Why don't we bring back Juan to America? I saw the trailer for these movies. I know what this whole thing is about. It's about a ghost family. Cool, I'm good. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that scene from the trailer where the hand shows up on the back of the person's head. Because that was in there. I'm going to take that scene where a teacher and adult is with the child and the child's sitting on the couch. Because that was in the trailer. That was a pretty cool scene. Oh, I just like to watch some cool scenes off YouTube as well. None of this movie was made with any care. It was just half-assed. You could pretty much have a clipboard with all the tropes of horror and just start checking them off as you're watching this film. Like, oh, jump scare, boom. Oh, thing in the closet, boom. Oh, see things, boom. No one else can see it, boom. It's awful. It's horrible. No sense of suspense or tension whatsoever. Now, I will admit there was one pretty cool scene that was interesting, but for the most part, none of these characters mattered. All these characters were awful. John Cho, like I said, was wasted, and what they did with his character made no sense because they can't... Ugh, no, nah, I'm not even going to get into it. 
it's too much spoilers just in case you do want to watch this movie. I am going to give The Grudge a 1 out of 10. It's the first movie I've seen of the year and it is already contender for worst movie of 2020. It's that bad. I didn't think any movie could be worse than Grudge 3, but congratulations! Have you seen The Grudge? Please do don't go see it. Just don't go see it. Have you seen the previous versions of The Grudge or the Japanese equivalent, Juon? What did you think of those? Post in the comments below. Click like, click subscribe, click the bell notification, click whatever else YouTube has you clicking in to support me. You can support me on Patreon at Kaiju no Kami, Twitter at Kaiju no Kami, Facebook Kaiju no Kami, and my website creativitybydesignllc.com. Until next time, bye.